talk about. He's quite poor. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Ian. Uh, this channel is all about music and art and this is a series of videos about the Korg Op6 synthesizer. And I've been doing quite a few of these videos. This is video number six. Now what we've done in the past is, and if I think about I need my notes actually, uh, the first one we did was a, a, just a first look round of me, me knowing very little about FM synthesis was just playing around with it. Uh, we then went through the firmware update, uh, we looked at the COG sound librarian, um, we then used a uh, SysX librarian to import SysX files, um, which is to be fair is something that you would have thought that the COG sound librarian can, can do but it doesn't. Um, we then compared DX7 factory presets and having imported them into the OP6. And in this video, we're explaining, or we're going to explore Brian Eno's DX7 patches. Now, in 1987, Brian Eno uh, was a massive champion for the Yamaha DX7. And he obviously spent an awful lot of time learning how to program it, because as is well known, it was all, I found it impenetrable, and I, I've owned two of them. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't really get my head around it. But anyway, Brian Eno did and he published four of his patches in Keyboard Magazine in 1987. And what I thought would be quite a, a good thing to do is I've now imported those patches into the OP6. Now, first thing to say is they will definitely sound different. We haven't got the originals of how they sound on Brian's DX7 to compare. They will, they will sound different. The FM engine inside the OP6 is different. But what I thought would be quite a nice idea is to take those six sounds and then just play with them and look at the, the, the how quick you can really morph the sounds um, to, you know, and, cre and create other sounds out of those sounds. Um, so I hope you enjoy. So, right, let's get started. I'll just set my recorder going. So the first one on Brian Eno's patches is Kalimba 2. So here is Kalimba 2 and here is how it sounds. Sorry, let me just get rid of that. Uh, there we go. Right, so here is Kalimba 2 as it sh we assume it might have sounded. I have to say that's not quite what I expected to find. And I mean, I know what a kalimba sounds like, so it's... Just turn up a little bit. So what we've got here is the way that the OP6 works is we've got um, a carrier and modulators and we've got uh, operator 1 is the carrier with operator 2 and 3 being modulators and then operator 4 is a carrier and 5 is a carrier and modulator 6 is, an oper is a modulator. Now um, I am no expert on FM synthesis and there is some very, very good instructional uh, videos. In fact, I'll put one of them down below. There's one from the guys at Korg in the USA, which he makes it, he explains it very, very simply. So I'm not going to go through that sort of part of it. But actually, let's just play around with this kalimba sound. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the arpeggiator on. Now, one of the weird things about the OP6 is that to change the tempo of the arpeggiator, or the sequencer for that matter, 
Now obviously there's no sequence mapped to this and we're going to leave that alone. We either have to tap tempo or we have to go into the section here and it's automatically set for whatever the sound is to 120. So we'll, we want to we'll want to bring that down. Oops, wrong one. So go back to that. Um, right, take the tempo down to I don't know, what's 100. See what it's like with that. Still too fast. Now the other thing we can do is we can latch it. So if I press and hold that and press that. I can change it to latch so it'll now play the chord and actually I quite like the idea of it being random. So right there we go. So let's just have operator one first of all on its own. Absolutely nothing. So let's add some reverb. A little bit of delay. Let's try the chorus. And I'm, now what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to change the algorithm. Now, in Eno's original patch, it was algorithm 19. Uh, let's just let's just go through some of those algorithms and see what they uh, see what what happens really. So. I'm quite liking that. That's really quite something, and you can you can definitely do something with that sound. Let's move on to the next one, and the next one is Tambora. Now I have no idea whether that is just a made-up name. I've never found. No, I don't know if there's an instrument called a Tambora. If there is, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, let's have a bit of reverb. So let's just see what it's like with just the operator without the carriers. So if I just do that, so that's just the carrier, which is operator one. Now 
I can certainly see how that would be part of one of Eno's soundscapes. We'll start bringing in some of the modulators. Starts running a, uh, an arpeggiator pattern and I'm going to slow it down so we'll take it down to something I don't know 66 sounds good and then we'll latch it and we will make it random as I like to do Very therapeutic and you can see how easy it is to sort of get some of these very ambient sort of sounds. Let's have a look at number three. Number three is Glide. So here is the raw sound. Not quite.
so we've got two carriers both with two modulators uh, and let's just the usual start with the sequence start with an arpeggiator and we'll take the tempo down to I don't know 40 and we'll put it on latch and turn it onto random so here we go mm -hmm. Wow, that's brilliant. Uh, look, I could see me putting that into an album. And it's a pity that the Korg Op 6 is having to go back. Let's look at the last one. The last one is Violin 3. If I remember rightly, the DX7s didn't manage violins, do violins very well. But anyway, well, let's have a listen. We've got one carrier, five modulators. Let's have a listen. Give it a bit of reverb.
same as always. Change the tempo. Match the app and put it on random. Oops, let's start that again.
Well, I hope you found that useful. It's very, the one thing I will say about the OPSIX is that once you get your head around it, and I was, if you watched my first video, I was really not interested in FM synthesis. Um, but actually the reality is that um, this instrument is incredibly flexible. Uh, I'm going to do a full roundup in my next video. Um, but for now, um, I will say thanks very much for watching. And if you like what I do, hit the subscribe button. Uh, and all of the other videos that I've mentioned in this series are linked down below. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. So thanks very much. Cheers now. Bye bye.